I wouldn't do well in jail. Just visiting stressed me out. Everything about the place, beige concrete, tiny windows, guards in heavy vests, screamed, you're stuck here. I knew that was the point, but feeling stuck was one of a dozen things that set off my anxiety hyperdrive. The second time I visited my dad here, I got dizzy, started sweating buckets, and nearly barfed. A correctional officer had to call a nurse, and it turned into this whole embarrassing scene. I hated embarrassing scenes almost as much as I hated panic attacks. So put them together, and it was Brian Day's perfect nightmare. But I still showed up most Sunday afternoons because it was the only way to see my dad. I made it through the first steps okay this time. Checked in, got through the scanner to make sure I wasn't smuggling anything, followed an officer to the visiting room where dad and I would have an hour together. My breathing was shallow and my face tingled, but that was only average nerves and not full panic. Waiting was the hardest part. My brain went to weird places until dad showed. Worst case scenarios, jail edition. One, the jail will go into lockdown and I won't get to see dad. Two, someone jumped him and he's bleeding out while I sit here waiting. Three, the guards have been possessed by murderous alien spores and I'll have to use my wits to rescue dad and stage a daring escape. My therapist, Dr. Bender, told me it was okay that I couldn't always stop my worst thoughts. Most people couldn't. But she said when I started going bleak, I should picture the most absurd worst case scenario I could imagine. Sometimes this worked. In my mind, I was crawling through air ducts like I was in Die Hard when the door opened and Dad stepped in. He crossed the room and pulled me into a hug. He never used to be a hugger, but now he squeezed me like he was trying to imprint me into his chest. I hugged him back just as hard. Eventually, he let go and held me at arm's length. Sheesh, B-Man, you grow another inch this week? You'll be ducking through doorways soon. He was exaggerating, but I'd grown four inches in five months since I turned 13. I had to buy all new pants for school. Dad's eyes drifted toward the door. Your mom's not here? I swallowed. Uh, no, she was going to come, but Richie, uh, I get it. Dad forced a smile. Can't blame him. I'd rather not be here either. If he was upset that my 10-year-old brother refused to visit again, he hid it well. We sat. My eyes drifted to the officers by the doors and the other families huddled at tables with their loved ones.